Welcome to GrayPrimer.com. My name is Nick. I'm your host on today's episode. We're not going to get through all this in one day, so we're going to go for a second episode tomorrow. Why? Well, this is why. Bone Reapers, and lots of them. So this is a heap of stuff to get through with these Bone Reapers. I, I'm, I, I can't wait. They look incredible from the boxes and what I've seen online. I almost went to three days with this special, but I've got a four-day Warhammer weekend coming up quite soon, and I kind of wanted to save my breath for that. So let's go two days on this. Let's split it in half. We'll do... Yeah, we'll do the big box stuff today, and then the little box stuff tomorrow. Back soon. So I know I said I was going to do the big boxes, but let's get these three little boxes out of the way too. Uh, the Mortisan Bone Shaper, we got the Mortisan Soul Mason, and the Mortisan Soul Reaper. Uh, we will get into those now as well. Um, I think we'll start there. Let's start with these three little guys, and we'll get the Catacross, Catacross, who knows. Uh, the Mortark of the Necropolis. We've got the Ossiark Bone Reapers, Bone Tithe Nexus, and the Mortak Crawler here, which is amazing looking. All right, but let's have a look at the three smaller boxes first, and we're gonna need scissors. Okay, pop these out of the way. So this is the Mortisan Bone Shaper, and interesting looking, and it's a, one of these blister packs, so I just have to cut it open with scissors, and let's get into it. So yeah, that's a 32 mil base, and then we've got our little sort of front facing card here with a lovely paint job. I mean, look at that, that's neat. Just mid reanimation on that bit of corpse. Or maybe it's using it as like a projectile. It sort of lifts it with the lightning and then wings it across the, the battlefield. And then we've got our nice color instructions on the back, which is very good. And here we have the sprue itself. You can see the mini is standing on top of a partially buried skull, which is cool. And some nice details there too. There's the lightning effect and the body and that wicked hairdo. And a spinal column. Gotta love that. So that's a, the Mortisan Bone Shaper. Next, so one thing to look out for when cutting these is this plastic gets lethally sharp when you're cutting it. Um, but I have survived. Survived to cut another sprue. Another 32 mil base, and then we have this nice instruction leaflet with Mortis and Soul Reaper. Mm, pretty cool. So these are all the Sort of necromancer types, I guess. Magical types, anyway. We have our normal 32 mil base and the sprue itself. As we have come to expect with Games Workshop, there's a ridiculous amount of detail. Even the toes poking out from under the cloak there. Really. Uh, that looks so intricate there, so fragile, but I'll just clip it very carefully. Anytime you're clipping anything like this, well, we start with the most fragile part, the part that's got the, what looks like it's going to snap off the easiest, and just sort of support the plastic as you clip, um, so that you're not sort of clipping and twisting because that can sometimes put pressure on other parts and snap them off. So just try and support it as much as possible while you clip. If you've got a third or a fourth hand, then you're going to be laughing. 
That's some nice stuff in there as well. Cool. Looks pretty cool. Looks pretty good. And our last does not need any cutting. This is our Mortisan Soul Mason. Comes in a much more traditional box. And a larger base as well. Just kind of cool. A 40 mil base. The looks of things. And let me see. Mortis and Soul Mason. Some spectral stuff going on above it there. Oh, it looks like it's coming out of his cane, is it? Hard to tell what that's coming out of. Oh, it looks like a, an extra. Speaking of extra hands, there's one. And he's just kind of sitting cross legged, chilling out on the, <laughs> the what looks like mech legged throne, but with sort of dinosaur claws. Ah, Warhammer. You're just. You're just the best. And then we got the sprue itself here. Get this stuff out of the way. Oh, they really are the best, aren't they? Look at the detail in this. And I've seen a few reports online, not very many, but a few people have said that the miniatures have come broken in the box or with bits snapped off. I've never experienced that. They always seem to be well packed and they have these, see these like support pegs here that are built into their mold um, that keep them safe in their boxes. That's kind of cool. Kind of like that little spiky triangle thing in the middle of a pizza. That's the job that those little towers of terror do. Cool, cool, cool. Speaking of pizza, it looks like a pizza oven. I'm sure it's not. That would be somewhat strange on the battlefield. Very welcome on the battlefield, I would imagine, but strange nonetheless. Okay. We want to get into the big stuff. Oh, more tech crawler, second to last. And the uh, Catacross, Catacross. Oh, my pronunciation. Oh, I don't know. Gonna leave that to last because it's obviously the coolest thing ever. Uh, we're gonna get stuck into this one the uh, Osiar Bone Reapers Bone Tithe Nexus. Which has the, the strangest thing I noticed on the back. Um, not that. That's, whoops. That's just rules included. That's what it says over here. A hundred percent. So it's shown to scale on the back. And I know when you're looking at it on your TV that that's irrelevant, but here's my hand. Also irrelevant because people have different size hands. Hmm. So let's get something to scale this up that's not just completely irrelevant. Here's a Warhammer painting handle. Give you an idea. The statue itself, the, the um, what's it called? Nexus. The Nexus is about twice the size of that. I guess about three times the size with the base included. So, pretty big. Pretty big. Right. Let's see. Sometimes scenery doesn't really do it for me, but this looks kind of cool. I kind of like the... I kind of like the pile of bones that it's that it's sitting on. It looks kind of interesting and sort of the treasure and everything. So I wonder, do they deliver the treasure as a as tribute or something? We got our ooh in black and white. Ew! Getting so used to them being in color now. Yes, in black and white. Well, it's not the most complicated build anyway. You know, it's going to be pretty straightforward. It's, 
yeah, I don't think that needed to be in colour, so it's probably a good choice from Games Workshop. I imagine the colour ones cost a lot more. And then we have this. So, is this the same sprue? Yeah, two of the same sprue. So I guess our um, tower is, yeah, just connects like that together. So there you go. It's the same. So we'll look at one of them. Decent enough detail. This is super cool though. Look at that. Now that I love. The other part of it. And then this huge sword with the inscription the whole way along there. And other parts of the tower. So great. Looking so forward to getting into that one. And next up we have, not this guy, but this thing. The Mortec Crawler. That is just too cool. I have no idea what size it is. I suppose I can guess from, you know, looking at the... <gasps> is that a guy inside a hamster wheel? No way! So this guy runs around here and it, it brings the... Oh, that's a different design. Okay, so two variants on this. I guess one is... Um, catapult. This is catapult as well. I know. We're going to have a look at it. Um, cauldron of torment, necrotic skulls, cursed steel. Oh, there's a lot of things going on here. Um, but but this guy cranking it up. You know, he's he's the one who I guess it pulls back the arm, applies the tension. Oh, that's brill. Hopefully when they actually fire it, he doesn't just spin around in there like crazy. Hopefully it disconnects from the gearing. And there's this chap here, the war vis vizier, who I guess pulls the trigger and maybe he's laughing so hard because that guy does spin around in his hamster wheel when it's fired. Who knows? <laughs> it's just awesome. So it looks like there's going to be a few variations here on how to put this together. Hey, color. Yeah, I think this one needs to be color. Looks pretty complex. Okay, yeah, so here's our first sort of variation um, between the two designs, the two key differences. Yep. Okay. Looks like a huge base. And look at the, the little legs and stuff underneath. And the tusks at the front. And there's huge bones that make the actual um, firing mechanism. What kind of a creature is that from? I guess dragon bones or something? Are dragons a thing in Age of Sigmar? They should be a thing in Age of Sigmar. They probably are. Pop that out of the way. Let me see. Oh, look at the details. Oh, wow. So, very cool. I like that they had to go and source different sized skulls to get this effect. It must have taken a bit of work. And the huge bones that make up the firing arm there and that's a pretty cool detail maybe that's the creature that huge bone came from and then some of the actual ammunition for it and second sprue i guess that's the main body of the weapon groovy little legs that go underneath it Oh, we'll flip this over. There's probably more detail on this side. Okay, part of the hamster wheel. The other part. And somewhere here is a poor guy who has to run around that for the rest of his undead eternity. 
And then a huge base. Look at that base. That's awesome. Where's our painting handle again? I'll give you an idea of the scale of this thing. Very cool. Right, so that is our Mortec crawler, which is a pretty special looking catapult that that has its own little feet walking along. There's something um, Discworld about that, like Terry Pratchett about that, that this has got these tiny little legs that are walking this around the battlefield. That's great. Alrighty. Wow. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I know that I like it. That's a beauty. Uh, right. Let's get into this. Oh. That's unusual. Oh, there's a second sleeve inside. I have to unlock it at the bottom here, do I? Oh, yeah. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, cool. Ooh! Nice art. Oh, yeah. Give you some inspiration for paint schemes. Oh, that flying guy is amazing. Not sure how he got into the air with those busted up wings, but maybe he's just jumping. Very cool. What's on the back? Oh, same image, but it's there's more of it. This is kind of zoomed in. And this gives you an idea of the the none too friendly looking ground troops. Bit of scenery. Grumpy column. And yeah. Right, that's neat. That's a nice little touch inside sleeve. This is, um, it's not the cheapest kit in the universe, uh, especially when you see one Citadel miniature on the front. It's not really one Citadel miniature. It's, it's like one diorama because you get this guy, you got someone over here. I think there's somebody there showing like this scroll to this Mortark. Um, just like, here's the thing. It's like a teleprompter, you know, but with ancient uh, words on it. And then this other guy over here, there's crows. So there's a lot going on. Um, but yeah, it's still expensive. Um, the thing is, the, the quality of this, the type of figure it is, like you're only ever going to buy one of these. and So they are expensive, but they're expensive to machine. They're expensive to, to make the molds for them. The CAD cam that goes into Warhammer stuff is cutting edge, like the, the best miniatures we've probably ever seen for level of detail on a mass produced scale. And um, you've got to make a profit on everything that you manufacture. If people are only buying one of these, and why would you buy two? Because there's only going to be one more talker than Acropolis on your battlefield. It's going to have to be at a certain price point for Warhammer to make a profit on it. And and much like the likes of the, the Glotkin here, it's going to be one of those miniatures that you'll put on your shelf and just look at all the time. You know, this, this guy's just, it's just too pretty to ignore. And yeah, expensive to buy, but absolutely would do it again tomorrow. So let's have a look at this. Thinking this is going to be full color, which, which it is. So all the glue points and everything, which is great to have. Good size of this base. That's just very cool. Sometimes I'm not sure what these mean. See these little hazard symbols? I don't really know what that, sometimes what those are referring to. Is it telling me that it has to go out the back of the cloak here or something? I'm not sure. I guess I'll find out when I'm building it. But sometimes those, those instructions are a little vague for me. Um, look at all the stuff that goes around the base. I just can't wait for this. Uh, we've got 
the rules for them as well there. And then a really nicely detailed painting guide on the back. All of the sort of lines going across to the different elements telling you what paints were used, you know, in order there from, from base through to glaze or to the different layers. I think that's brilliant. That's a really nice guide. I mean, they normally have guides in these things, but this just seems to be this bit much more detailed. And maybe it's just because there's so many elements to the miniature. Oh, that's a cool part of it with the, the crow on top of the, the wee cage. Yeah, awesome. Another one of these huge bases. And then, oh, all in one sprue. Look at the size of this. Ah, it's magic. I remember back in the days when I first started getting into the hobby in sort of the late 80s and into the early 90s, you would see these fantastic sort of diorama bases that people would scratch build and they'd be in sort of the Golden Demon Awards and stuff. And I was just always, you know, in a, I was like amazed that people could come up with this stuff, that they could build it as well. And now you've got these fantastic miniatures that come with it included. Beautiful. All the different components of the base, that cool, uh, oh yeah, the crow on top of the cage. Now that connection to the cage is skinny. I will have to be very careful. That looks really, really <laughs> making me nervous just looking at that. And I'm sure it'll be fine, I'm sure it'll be fine. He says with no confidence. All the other bits and pieces. Some weird looking spider thing there. All right. That looks really neat. Really looking forward to get into this one. Okay, so I'm gonna get building. Uh, in real time, you would not wanna be waiting for how long this is gonna take me, but in magic YouTube time, I'll be back in just a few seconds. See you then, bye-bye. So let's start with the Ossiarch Bone Reapers Bone Tithe Nexus. Uh, the largest, physically the largest kit. Definitely not the most difficult to put together. It's, it's incredibly simple to put together. There are a few variations on how you can, you know, dress the, the miniature sort of around the, the pillars and things. You can put like different sort of piles of bones or different skeletons or whatever. It is big though. So if in your workspace you're used to just building miniatures, you may need to rethink about how you have it laid out because this takes up a lot of space. Let's find something for comparison. Here is a Mortac guard, regular kind of figure. Here is the very base of the Bone Tithe Nexus. So, as you can tell, this is a heck of a miniature. It's not even a miniature, you know, it's scenery, but it gives you an idea of the scale here. Uh, it's actually pretty cool putting it together. The actual main statue in the middle is not the most interesting thing, but it serves a purpose. You know, it, this is for Nagash to have a very clear, I am watching you from every angle and I am ready to do battle should you not pile your corpses on my steps here. And that's kind of where the, the lore of this gets really interesting and really creepy where these elite forces, the Osiric Bone Reapers, would come into your town or village and build one of these Bone Tithe Nexus uh, statues and say, okay, you know, your community has to produce or to deliver this many bodies at whatever, you know, this many bodies a, a season or a year or whatever. And they'd be like, if you don't do that, we'll come and get the bodies anyway, but they'll be a bit more sort of 
walking around when we come to get them. We're not going to wait for them to die. Well, if you don't deliver, we'll just kill you, you all. Take the bodies back to our sort of, um, back to our HQ to make our next sort of wave of construct elite forces. So when one of these pops up, it's your job as whatever the village chief to make sure that you deliver. And that's kind of where in my head it gets kind of a little grisly. Because you as a village chief or whatever would be like, well, I know I have to deliver, you know, whatever, a thousand bodies by the end of harvest. Or we're all going to die. And maybe you, your mortality rate isn't that high. Maybe your population isn't that high. So what are you going to do? You're going to just go into the next village or the one after that and slaughter a few hundred folks and drag their corpses back to the tithe. It's insane when you start to think of it in those terms. So the, what I thought was going to be one of the least interesting miniatures uh, turned out to be really interesting lore-wise. And... Yeah, that's that's what happens when this lot come knocking on your on your village gates or your town gates. So, in detail, everything you see here that looks like debris around the steps, uh, it'll be bodies. So you can see all the skeletons piled up here, even inside the barrels. The barrels are full of skulls. And these um, monoliths, hang on while we get focus. These monoliths have inscriptions on them. This uh, treasure chest that's cracked open here is full of treasure that's only of use to Nagash. And yeah, generally really, it's a nice looking miniature when you start to look at the details and everything. Uh, it would be incredibly impressive in the middle of your battlefield. But the lore, the lore is incredible. It's insane. Okay, let's move on to the next. In terms of combat and the practice of warfare, that's controlled by someone else. That's going to be controlled by Catacross. The maintenance of the army the construction, the ongoing sort of growth of the um, the Osiric Bone Reapers, that's down to these three here. Let's look at the Mortisan Soul Reaper. Mortisan Soul Reaper will pull the souls from the bodies in front of them. And looks like they're trapped inside these vials. You see it just here. So it's actually got a Really cool scythe there. Oops. Some lovely detail on the face. And great sort of tattered robes and everything. But I love this. You know, it's actually in the process of reaping the soul. And uh, bawling it, you know. And then after this, we have the Mortis and Soul Mason. So the soul mason is going to make these spirits do the bidding of Nagash. Get them ready. And you can see it's looks like, yeah, it's coming out of the same sort of vial here. Oops, sorry for focus there. And the, I guess, with the power of the staff and whatever other mystical forces he's got going on, he's going to convert this soul into something that's going to be in the service of Nagash and can go into one of the construct bodies that's built of all the bones and everything just like all of these guys are these guys are all built from these are all constructs but this one's got the big hat so he gets to do the big job what i do love about this is it's kind of the, they've constructed a, an age of sigmar mech here um which is there's something terry pratchett about this as well something discworld about it with this sort of <laughs> thrown with feet and legs just sort of wandering around uh, transporting this guy and he's just cross-legged and chill you know doing his job shaping these souls for his uh his 
you know, god boss. And then finally, we've got the Mortisan Soul, uh, sorry, Bone Shaper. And the Mortisan Bone Shaper is in mid construct here. Putting the, the finishing touches to this, missing a few parts, but held up in the air by this sort of force coming out from this, from the skull that the, the Bone Shapers decided just to stand on today. And I love the sort of the drama of it as he's looking across and focused completely on building this thing. And that's that's great. I mean, that's it gives you some of the the industry of this army and how absolutely terrifying they are when you think that they just have this system, this engine in place for growing their army all the time regardless they're just constantly building it up and i think that's where you got to really look at this army in terms of the lore of being um pretty terrifying and also incredibly cool unless you're a stormcast player and you just think this is utter her heresy and blasphemy um, but but I'm enjoying them and it's really pulling me in and it's adding a lot of value to even the process of building them and enjoying sort of the the diorama that seems to be contained in each of these so here we have the Mortec crawler and this is a pretty amazing looking catapult and I think, again, we're seeing a story here within the miniature, a diorama, not, not just a, you know, here's a catapult and here are some, you know, operators standing around it. There's a story, there's interaction between them. You're, you're getting a moment frozen in time here. And much like the other Bone Reaper miniatures, that's what seems to be the consistent flow through them. There is a narrative, there's a mini story in every single one, or in many of them. And we, you know, we'll see tomorrow sort of what the, the Mortec Guard look like, the, the foot soldiers. We'll see, is it going to be the same in there? Is there going to be that cinematic energy, that, that frozen moment in time? And it'll be interesting to see if they're able to carry it the entire way through the range. But let's have a look at this. So this is the Mortec Crawler. Uh, there are a couple of variations on this. You can have it with the the actual arm down being reloaded, or you can have it at the at its full um, height here. Uh, it it gets stopped by this bar going across, which looks like it's covered in some kind of rubberized material here, which is kind of clever. Arm stops there. Projectile goes flying off. And whoever's on the other end of it better have a pretty sturdy umbrella. It came to th those projectiles. I couldn't really decide what I wanted on it. It would give it a little bit of extra visual interest if I was to able to, to swap out with, with different sort of payloads. Here you've got this um, sort of spectral, you know, ectoplasm and it's all like this gooey mess and it's full of skulls. In this one, you've got some kind of a mystic um, container covered in runes and with a sort of spiritual energy coming off the back of it. And then this one was just a bunch of skulls. Just throw a bunch of skulls over there. Uh, I don't know how effective they would be, but, you know, I guess if you've got spare skulls, and these guys definitely have spare skulls, you might as well fling them over while you're waiting for your other stuff to get manufactured in your you know munitions wing or whatever whoever's putting these things together so because i couldn't decide i ended up putting a magnet underneath each of them and then a corresponding magnet inside the top here so that when i sort of put it together it's just a case of whichever one i want to go with of course they're all and that's the, the pile of skulls. And then whatever the mystery boxes. 
So you can set it up whichever way you want. You can paint these all separately. And there is a fourth one as well, just while I grab it. This one, I'm actually still just doing a little bit of work on, so I haven't primed it yet. I just wanted to upgrade the, um, the magnet in it because it just feels a little weak to me. But that's the last one, and it's sort of like a, a cauldron full of... looks like souls. And if the soul mason has done his job on these, it's they'll be um, dedicated to the god Nagash. And you probably don't want them roaming around inside your castle walls or behind your front lines. So those are the four missile options or whatever way you want to set this up. Of course, you could just glue in your favorite and let that be it. But I wanted to leave myself some options there. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. And we got this really cool looking front to it with the tusks and everything. It looks animal. And you got more of these groovy little legs that just propel it along. Some kind of a uh, stabilizing sort of hook deal here. It's on both sides. You know, it just hooks into the ground and stops the back end from flipping up. And with these being, you know, everything here is just constructed. Everything is just constructed from the, the bones of the dead, reanimated, given these shaped souls. You can see underneath, it's all skulls, everything, everywhere you look. And you could probably deconstruct this entire thing and see where sort of, I mean, this is probably a, maybe a brass plate of some huge creature. You know, this part here, you've got some kind of a armored tail from some other creature. They use, like, for storing skulls, they have, let me see if we can get, you can just see its open maw there. See the eyes and the nose and the teeth. And that's like a coal bunker equivalent, but it, it's full of skulls. But you can break this entire miniature down into all these component parts and you can just see how clever this army is and i just i think it's really interesting so this guy here has a full-on spanner and a hammer to knock the spanner around he's part of the winch team i think or he is the winch team for getting the, the arm back down up here you've got our spotter design are giving orders back here i guess for you know where to where to aim he's accompanied by a little crow up top there which is a feature of the the bone reapers throughout the miniatures you get a lot of crows and you have this work team at the back loading up skulls this guy hits something with his mallet and it releases the thing. You've got the counterweight down below here. And possibly the cool, and then the basket up top. And the coolest part is the hamster wheel guy. I just think this guy's brilliant. Just doing his thing, keeping up his cardio. And all day long, he's just hamster wheeling. So I'm guessing this is something to do with the targeting system and or perhaps this is this is the main winch i guess for getting this back yeah i'd say that's much more likely and perhaps this dude here is i'm not sure maybe he's he's got he's on the trigger don't know but there's a lot going on and it really gets the the mind thinking i mean you're, you've got a a really cool miniature you've got a really exciting little diorama going on there there's a there's lots of sort of like what's he do what is he doing what, i mean what's he looking at what's he shouting down to the team um and then the, the different options for the missiles that you put into it all those little legs from the you know the, the reconstituted bodies i think it's just so cool there's just so much to think about when you're exploring a model like this fair play to whoever designed it but I think 
it's going to be close competition for the best miniature of today with what's coming up right now. So this is the big one. This is Catacross, the Mortark of the Necropolis. Look at the size of this guy. He just towers above the people around him. Even, even this character right beside him here looks like he's sort of, oh, he's normal sized and then this is slightly bigger. No. This little dude here, this is a normal sized person. So even this guy is a giant by comparison. So Catacross is a hulk of a thing. And I was sort of concerned when putting it together that it would be fragile. It's a real sort of standalone marquee piece. I mean, having this in the middle of your, well, you wouldn't have in the middle of your battlefield, but probably the back of your battlefield, you know, your opponent is going to know that all of the stuff you're going through, all of the grind of getting through the regular Bone Reapers is going to be tough. And I think knowing that you know, your depleted forces will still have to face off against this thing. Oh, that, that can't be easy. That really can't be easy. I, I do not envy armies going up against this um, monolith of a of a soldier. Uh, the his his shield is the size of a normal uh, person, and I think that's that's just so cool. So let me see if I can get some names for these characters around him. So his weapon here, which is this long staffed bladed weapon it is a name it is called the indicat the shield has a name this is called the shield immortalis or sorry immortus uh this chap over here this is liege immortus uh his weapon is a nadirite dueling blade this is the banner of catacross uh, held by the Prime Necrophorus. And then the Aviarch Spymaster is the chap down here with the birds. And then we have the Gnosis Scroll Bearer. And the Genosis, it's spelled G N O S I S, so I'm not sure if that's Genosis, Genosis, or just Gnosis, but anyway, he's the uh, Scroll Bearer. And hopefully you can hard to angle in there, but there is there are there are inscriptions on the scrolls as well. So let's have a look at Catacross's banner. Pretty spectacular. Right up to the very top, there are a lot of detail. Uh, Catacross has a larger looking bird. Looks like a construct as well. Like, you know, when you see the chest of it there, it doesn't look natural. So I guess the birds are constructs too. I don't think the other ones are in the other kits. They, they look more natural. But as you can see, the base here, you know, you got huge skulls, the steps up here. And you kind of get the feeling that if he starts to walk down those steps, then you're probably not going to have the best afternoon. Uh, I think there's something going on in every angle of this. I actually like, this is probably my favorite character. What's he called again? The, the Aviark Spymaster. I loved his uh, beaky helmet. He has got a bird in his hand there, I think. Yeah, it looks like a bird in his hand. Another one in the cage, one on top of the cage. And around the back, there's some detail as well there. More sort of these embedded skulls. Taddy robes, but I don't think they care about how fancy their robes are. This is an elite army in the service of a god of death. All they care about is 
making their army bigger. Uh, that's probably the crux of it. Building it, pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't think there were too many challenges in there. It's probably not as interesting a build process as maybe some of the other larger kits uh, within the Bone Reapers range. I don't think that it was... It sort of held my attention as much as, say, some of the the horses we're going to look at tomorrow or some of the larger figures we're going to look at tomorrow. And and there's less of a narrative going on here. So there is some stuff. I mean, you got the, the, the Necrophorus there with the banner. You've got his, probably his bodyguard, in all honesty. This Legion Mortis. And then you've got his guy holding up his newspaper, telling them how things are going. I guess probably telling him how the uh, bone tithes are doing in certain regions. And then we've got the spy master as well. So his nearest and dearest are all around him. So that brings us to the end of day one of our Ossiarch Bone Reaper special. This phenomenal army from Warhammer. And I have not been disappointed so far. Some really cool builds in there. Really cool set pieces. Some incredible drama and narrative going through the miniatures, which I wasn't expecting. Hopefully tomorrow that will continue as we get into the sort of the, the medium sized kits and we will finally get to have a look at the miniature I've been so excited about, the Gothazar Harvester. Will it be as good as Catacross here? Will it be as good as the, the huge catapult? I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon.